Hello there, I'm Sean Briggs, and today I'm going to be showing you how to key out the green from your own green screen footage and then pop in your own background. Let's dive in. Where do I put my arms? Oh, sorry. Firstly, I open up Premiere Pro and After Effects. After Effects is what we're primarily going to be using for this process, but I use Premiere Pro for the start phase to make my selects. And what I mean by selects is, is that what we do is we bring in our, our just raw footage, do the in and out points, and we place it all on a timeline. So I'm talking about the specific shots and takes that we're going to be using for our final edit. So I've already made my select. Here I am just kind of waving my hands around. So you're just gonna go ahead and you're going to select the footage that you want to bring into your After Effects composition. So I'm gonna just go Control C for copy. And then I literally just whiz on over to the After Effects. As you can see, I've already made a composition here. I'm just gonna make sure the timeline is selected and just hit Control V. And that'll paste in my footage for me. And for our next step, we just go right up to the Effects drop-down in After Effects, and then we navigate down to Keying. And once we've selected Keying, that'll make another drop-down for us, and we just go ahead and we click on Key Light. Key Light is the effect that we're going to apply to our footage to then begin the keying process. You need to actually choose which tone of green you're gonna key out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to screen color as it's listed here and just hit the color dropper. And we're just gonna select a nice bit of green just next to our subject here. And as you can see already, the green is gone, but we wanna be more thorough because with different green tones on our green screen, if it's not perfectly lit, like this wouldn't have been, for example. So um, on the view on the list here, it's right at the top, um, final result, you just wanna bring up that drop down, and then you wanna to go to screen mat. And what that does is um, it makes it so that everything that is in view still, so everything that's not been keyed out is white, and everything that is intended to be keyed out is black. So what we see here is obviously we see a lot of white and a lot of black, but what we can also see is that on me, there are little bits of black showing through my hair and through my glasses. Um, and also over here, you might be able to see it if I play back, little grainy blotchiness of where the, the green tones haven't keyed out completely. So what we're gonna do to fix this is we're going to go to the screen mat drop down. Uh, just around here and then we can do the clipping for black and white so what we can do is we bring up the black that makes it so that it'll take more variants of the color that you've picked so it kind of like you know squeezes in that contrast a little bit and then for the white you bring it down and it should um, restore some of the missing blotches from my hair and from my glasses just do these micro adjustments until you're happy when you feel like it's quite clean and that looks quite good um, the edges you might find on certain footage is a little bit rough sometimes or a little bit pixelated, jaggedy. So um, a nice way to just kind of make, soften that up is you've got um, screen softness here. So if you just bring that up really a really tiny amount, just like bring it up to maybe like three. Depending on how close or far away your shot is going to be when you're compositing, that is really going to be the deciding factor as to how detailed you need the edges to be. So in some cases you can leave it a little bit rough because it will be less noticeable on a smaller scale, but obviously when, if it's like taking up most of the screen, then those kind of imperfections will be more obvious to your audience. You really just have to judge it by eye to ensure that you're getting the quality that you need. And once you're happy with it, um, just go to the view drop down again and switch it back to final result so you can see what's left over. So the next step is we're going to take the After Effects pen tool and we're just going to draw a mask around the edges of our green screen so that we don't have any of this extra furniture lying around. I and mean, we just want me, really, alone in the void. Please don't avoid me in the void. The void is where I am. <laughs> I forgot my lines. Okay, and so what we do for that is just make sure that your footage is selected again on your timeline. Then you go to the pen tool at the top. We're just going to draw around the 
area of our green screen. And now with everything that you need removed from the frame, it is time to bring in your background. So here's one I made earlier. I took the time to make this in my, in my free time. And now, with your background in place, little Sean can give us his uh, very inaccurate forecast for the day. You better be wearing sun cream or I'm going to burn you. Finally, the last thing that you really need to do is you just need to export this and then bring it back into Premiere Pro. So what we do is we just make sure that our composition is all highlighted and then we go to Composition over at the top and then we go ahead and click on Add to Render Queue. And down here we've got some settings. So you just want to go ahead and click on the output module for lossless. Just click on lossless. And then as at the moment it's AVI. We just want to make sure that that is set to QuickTime. And then for our video output, click on the format options and just make sure that it's set to Apple ProRes 422. That's what I like to use in order to ensure that I've got decent quality when exporting ready for my edit. Then just hit OK. Hit OK again. If you've got audio, um, sometimes it's set to auto, but if it's set to off, just make sure it's on if you have audio. Click OK. And then the last thing we want to do is make sure that we're saving it to the right folder. So we just go to Output 2 and just click on the name that's in blue, Comp 1, and then just name it what you need to. We'll just call this one Weather Sean. Then just hit Save. And then that's all done. The last thing you do is you just hit Render. And then you'll get this loading bar. A little tip, if you don't really care for seeing this thing play back as you're exporting it, then just go ahead and make sure your caps lock is on. What that does is it stops the frames from rendering and it actually speeds up your exporting time. And finally when you hear After Effects sing its little song, that means that your export is now finished and you just need to navigate to the folder that you saved it to and you just want to go ahead and drag and drop your footage into your Premiere project in the bin that you've designated for it and then there you go here it is and you just need to find your slot in your edit for it and then jobs are good and so that concludes our tutorial for today if you found it useful then please consider giving this video a like and of course if you've got any questions then just leave them down in the comment section down below I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can and if you haven't done so already, then consider subscribing to our channel. We've got loads of content about all things audiovisual and photo video, so plenty for you guys to catch up on, and loads coming up. And again, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>